Hi, I'm Jennifer, and I'm in Applied Cognition and Development in the Educational Psychology Department at the University of Georgia. I picked this major because I um, had been a high school mathematics teacher for many years, and I struggled with student motivation in the classroom. And so I really felt the need to learn more about how to motivate students, and I decided to go back to school. Um, I already had my master's in um, math ed, and I came back to school to get my degree in ed psych due to my interest in student motivation. As a career, I'm well, right now I'm already um, a high school mathematics teacher while I finish my dissertation. Um, so I plan to just stay in the high school mathematics classroom. However, this is um, fairly unusual. Most students in educational psychology either um, work at a college or a university and do research. Um, I also, though, however, I'm interested in maybe working at the curriculum de um, department at the Board of Education or maybe even the um, Department of Education. There were many different courses and learning experiences here in educational psychology and um, there's a great, you can learn a great deal about different topics like child development, as I said, student motivation, um, multicultural education, creativity, curriculum and development, and student achievement and intelligence. And you also have a great deal of opportunities to do educational research. And um, there's many statistics courses that I also took, and this helped me learn about analyzing um, the data for my dissertation and conducting um, research. There's also many opportunities to um, be in assistantships, which might be, um, which might involve teaching a college level course or um, helping a professor with their particular research interests. The most valuable um, aspect of being a part of the program has been um, just exposure to lots of new ideas and um, also uh, different people that have done research in the field. So as I said, I wanted to really learn more about student motivation. and. That's, I feel like I did that. And now that I'm back in the high school mathematics classroom, I'm applying those ideas. And there's a big difference between theory and practice. And so I, I knew that when I was a master's level student. When I went into the classroom, it was a really, um, you know, it's scary being a teacher for the first time. Now I've been a teacher for many years, and I, and I really knew what I wanted to know about teaching, and that's what I was able to do. I was able to pursue my particular interest, take the courses that I wanted to take, and um, I really felt like I delved deep into student motivation and learned what I needed to learn. And now I'm applying that. I'm taking that theory back into practice, and I'm learning even more. I keep going back to, um, things that I studied while I was working on my dissertation and um, thinking, how does this really apply to my particular classroom? Advice that I would give to an incoming student would, involved, uh, would involve being uh, very organized. I feel like I was, I was fairly organized as a teacher, but I really didn't understand the level of organizational <laughs> skills that I needed. Um, for one, I really, micromanaged my um, calendar. And I use a Google Calendar and I had every last detail of that um, you know, managed, every hour managed. And I think that's really important to manage your time well. And also the um, ability to organize your files and folders on your computer, I learned so much about that. I felt, again, like I was fairly organized having taught for so many years, but I really, I had a mess on my computer at first when I started doing research. And then I learned over time to organize them much better. So I feel like if, the, if a student could talk to either people at the library or fellow students before they got started on their research and really understood how to organize their files better, that that would help them a, a lot with their research and staying organized. And the other advice I think I would give is to get involved as soon as possible um, with student groups, um, activities, 
with your professors and learn about what research your professors are working on and um, try and either volunteer to work with your professor or get an assistantship with that professor and just try and take a leadership role whenever you can and, and just get involved as quickly as possible so, so that you're going to maximize the amount that you learn while you're in school and, and hopefully finish as quickly as you can. Well, I think one of the difficult things was the financial part. Um, you know, I had a career already. I was getting a, not a great salary as a teacher, but definitely a, a salary. And so to leave that and um, not have a consistent salary was a big decision for our family. And luckily I had a supportive husband who um, helped me in that. Um, but I did have an assistantship while I was here. And that helped, of course, with tuition, but it didn't um, replace my salary as a teacher. So that's a huge consideration when you go back to school, how you're going to pay for it. But also, um, the other hardest part was really just the amount of time it takes to do everything that you need to do. And I feel like being a, a I don't know, a successful high school teacher, you, uh, work very hard at that career. I think it's one of the hardest careers I've seen in regards to my colleagues. They work from, you know, sunrise to sunset and constantly grading papers, carrying bags home back and forth to school. Even with all that, when I came back to school, um, it was really kind of a shock to me how much time it took. And, and, and the hours were very different from my usual hours. I was staying up late and getting up earlier. Um, and I would just work you know, until you finished what you had to do. So uh, there was a lot more coffee <laughs> being <laughs> consumed, things like that. It was just really a lot of work. You have to be prepared for the level of work that goes into it and be, be flexible with that.